Hello, Rob here from the Flanagan Homestead. I just got out of my pickup where I got out to the tree farm. It is July 14th. We're going to start Christmas tree shearing today. And uh, I wanted to give you an update on the heat. You know, as many of you following the channel know, we had record highs. Uh, a couple days of about 115 and 116 here, which is 40 degrees warmer than it's supposed to be. Uh, since then, we've calmed down to normal summer temperatures here. Today's high is supposed to be 78 degrees. Uh, for the next 10 days, the forecast is highs in the low, uh, high 70s and low 80s, which is more typical of this area. Uh, so this would normally be a good summer for all these new planted trees to survive, but uh, it was almost tragic what happened uh, in that really short, hot spell. So I'm going to show uh, some of what happened during that heat wave, and we'll uh, just go take a look at the trees. Here is one thing that we're pleasantly surprised about. Now I know there's a dead tree right here in front of us, but out here in front of us, this is last year's trees there and we thought that these would be completely devastated but you see a lot of green out here this is where we're really sad over here uh, every single tree that we planted this year bare root is dead so we have uh, 1600 bare root trees that went in the ground this year and uh, we don't see one that we think is going to make it but you could see the dividing line right here we've got New plantings this year, all dead. Last year's planting up on this row, and you can see that not only is there hope for them, they look good, and you come up to a tree like this, it's even got enough moisture in it that it's trying to put out uh, new growth right here, uh, second, a secondary growth for this year. So again, we've got over here, new planting, all 1,600 dead, Last year's planting looks like they're going to struggle, but they're going to make it, and they'll go next year. So we're pleased to see how much of last year's planting. We planted 3,500 trees last year, so we're hoping that most of those will still be around for the future. Again, here's last year's, I mean this year's trees, not going to make it. Actually, there's a tiny bit of green on these but I don't think there's much hope for any of these. So you might say I thought you planted uh, 2,000 trees this year and you talked about 1,600 dying. 1,600 bare root plantings are all dead. I'm out in the section now where there's a where we put some plugs and they're doing poorly but I would say we have a chance for some of these, these are the ones that I tried to come and water because there's a little bit of a basin uh, that could hold water. So of the 400 plugs, we may be, if we're lucky, we might get a 50% survival rate out of these. So out of 2,000 trees this year, we're hoping to keep 200. Right now I'm back in my office trying to get the editing of the video done. And uh, yeah, so obviously losing 2,000 trees is significant. You know, I plan to retire from teaching in seven years. These trees were going to be ready in about seven years. Those 2,000 trees were going to be worth, you know, approximately, well, if they were all matured, about $160,000. Obviously, it's not a $160,000 loss because they're first-year trees, and they're not worth that much. The estimated value of a first-year planted tree is $7. So it's, well, it's about a $14,000 loss. Um, but uh, it hurts. But if you saw my other videos before, you can't be a farmer if you quit. And the first time, it gets hard. Now, if the pattern continues... You know, you have to reconsider, but I think that this extreme heat that broke records, not by a little bit, but by a lot, uh, hopefully is not going to happen again, and we're looking at ways, and uh, we think the bare roots uh, plantings in the future are going to, be, uh, not, excuse me, the plug planting in the future is probably going to be, have a higher survival rate, so we're going to pursue that. 
and we're going to forge forward. And as you saw, the 3,500 trees that we planted last year, most of them are still in good shape. So we've got some trees that we're going to take to market there. So uh, things are going to work. So the effect of the heat on the older trees, if you look at it from the northwest side where it's not as much sun, it, it you can see damage, but it doesn't look terrible. So if you look at the trees from the northeast side, which obviously the sun does not, is on the south, and the sun rises in the east, so it's the morning sun, the trees do not look terrible over here. There's definitely damage, but they don't look terrible if you're looking at it from the northeast side. If you turn around and look at the trees from the southwest, where the afternoon sun hits it, you get a lot more damage apparent. If you look closely and inspect it, back here is last year's growth and the needles from last year have are more waxy and uh, can protect themselves and hold their moisture. But this is from here out is this year's growth and so the needles here were not as waxy and could and the fresher needles could not hold their moisture so that's where most of the sunburn action is so again we've got last year's growth mostly green this year's growth coming out and getting sunburn tips so it'll be interesting to see if all this brown falls out uh, if we'll have enough needles we're probably going to shear a little tighter this year and uh, hope we get a good tree. We may have to wait a year. I'm pretty confident if the weather does not get really bad this year uh, and hot again this summer that these trees will survive and we might just have to shear out a lot of this and then harvest them next year. Here's a mature tree that's out in front of my house. You can see that we're getting sunburn needles on the southeast side of these trees as well. It's not just the Christmas trees. It will be interesting to see if the Christmas trees and these trees drop all their needles that are dead and off before Christmas season and what's left is green. If you look on our sport court, our driveway right in front of the house, you'll see tons of needles which is not normal this time of year. Comparing tree types, we're in the nobles right now. Again, I'm filming from the north, so it doesn't look too terrible bad there. But the nobles did reasonably well with the heat. So I'm showing you all these trees pre-shearing. So we're not taking off any of the damage yet. And they don't have their shape, so don't judge them there. But uh, we've been raving, if you've been following my channel, we've been raving about Nordman firs and they're our most popular tree now. I don't have very many left to show you because they've been so popular, but I am recording these from the southeast side, the side that is uh, most damaged on the nobles and the grands, and these are showing significantly less damage. So uh, another reason to make us more enthused about the Nordman firs and we will continue to plant a higher and higher percentage of Nordmans throughout the years and the nobles are still king around here but uh, I don't know how much longer on this farm I think the Nordmen are going to take over. And finally our last stop in comparison the types of trees we're now standing in the grand firs the grand firs have finer needles and finer branches and you might be able to see I am recording from the southeast side again the side that was most sun and they just couldn't couldn't handle the heat much less so than the nobles and the Nordmans. This is probably the most dramatic visual I can give you. Uh, here we go southeast side of the tree
northwest side of the tree. It's damaged on all sides, but there's a whole lot of green here still. And this is just flat burnt up. I'm going to shear a lot of this off and see if we can find any green back in there. So just like we showed you on the nobles, uh, the grand fir, this is all first year growth out here. You go back into the last year's growth and there's a lot of green still in there. A lot of green. The, this branch started growing out from here this year and the entire branch is burnt up. This is last year's growing well. This is where it budded out from this year, all burnt up. Last year's growth, still there. So uh, it'll be interesting if I cut back in. Hopefully there's enough buds back in here for this tree to spread next year. And uh, obviously we're not selling this tree this year, but I honestly believe we're gonna get this thing back in shape. And next year it's gonna sell for $70. $70. Okay, I'm going to go try to shear the brown out of this tree. I'm going to cut it all, all of this year's growth that's on the south uh, west side where the sun really burned it. And I'm going to really tighten this down a lot. Now you need to be careful when you uh, cut back into the second year's growth because then it doesn't want to grow out. It doesn't have buds. So let me show you something about this. This darker green right here is part what was here last fall last year all this lighter green here is the new stuff if you look closely there was a well there's buds on the end of every branch on the tips of every branch there's buds that are going to continue to grow out now you can see that this one besides where it grew out on the very end there was other buds that grew out here and spread help fill the tree in if I go back to last year's growth though, looking at it now, there will be no more buds back here. So if I cut back here, there's no more buds. So the tree will be green, it'll have a good shape, but there's, there's not going to be many buds and it won't grow uh, normally. So, so here's a little tiny bud here, there's another one here. So this tree was going to have multiple branches grow out here one here, one here, and one here, and next year there was going to be no growth out here. So when you cut back, when you cut way back, sometimes the tree sits there for a year and it's not growing, and, uh, and then because it doesn't have that outward growth because there's no buds, it will actually set new buds on the ends of these eventually, and then the following year it will grow. So when you cut way back into a tree, which is sometimes necessary, just realize the next year it's going to look kind of odd because the very few buds that are left there they're going to shoot out and there's going to be but then the rest of the tree is just going to try to sit there and then the following year there will be new buds and it'll start to fill out again so uh, when you cut back into second year growth you're you're basically creating usually creating a two-year process to getting it back into harvestable so i'm going to go tighten this tree down a lot, see if I could take out all the brown and see what happens. Uh, the dangerous part about doing that on this tall of a tree is, you know, I need to make sure I really shorten the leader too, because I can't let the leader keep going up. It's already over 10 feet tall, and if I let the leader have another foot, another foot, it's going to be 12 feet tall and super skinny. So I'm going to tighten it widthwise, and I'm going to cut that leader short so that there's only like one bud on it. Uh, down to where there's only one bud so it's not gaining a lot of height either because I want to keep it proportional.
Doesn't look so drastic anymore, does it? Thanks for joining me on the Flanagan Homestead, where Christmas trees are my business, teaching including horticulture is my job, and outdoor projects are my passion. And we hope that we never have a heat wave like this again, and hopefully we have cool, wet summers. Nobody else likes cool, wet summers, but I do. And uh, Christmas trees will grow better. Hope to see you again soon.